Finally, a micro brand diver that checks all the boxes and manages to throw in some features that were pleasant surprises to see in this watch, the Travis Dive Watch from Dufresne Watches. In today's episode, we will take a look at the specs, the features, the overall design, and finally, the price. And I'll tell you how to save $100, so stick around to the end for that. Let's check it out. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the channel. In case if you're new here, my name's Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know it's a great day to wear a watch? Boom. Today I'm rocking my Tudor Black Bay 41. Very special piece of my collection. I don't think it will ever leave my collection. And I do plan on doing a video, kind of like a owning it after one year follow-up. So if that seems like something you would be interested in, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. Okay. Let's jump into this Travis Diver, which has kindly been sent in on loan to the channel for review. But as you know and expect, I'll give you my honest thoughts and opinions on this watch. Now, we'll come back to that Travis model name here in a bit, but first I want to give you all the specs, which show how Steven, the owner of Dufresne Watches, put in a ton of thought and consideration while building a diver that would be a good middle ground or that Goldilocks for a majority of wrist sizes out there. We have a case diameter of 39 millimeters, lug to lug height of 47 millimeters, case thickness of 12 millimeters, and a lug width of 20 millimeters, which will allow for a plethora of strap combinations possible. You guys know I love strap swaps, so be sure to stick around to the end of this review where I'll show you some of my favorite strap combos with this piece. We have a water resistance rating of 200 meters thanks to that screw down crown and screw down case back, and the watch is powered by the Swiss made Salida SW200 movement which has been regulated by Steven to run between plus or minus eight seconds per day. And this particular watch has an impressive accuracy of zero to plus one second per day with an amplitude of around 280 and zero beat error. The SW200 does have a power reserve of about 38 hours and beats at four Hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. The watch also has a flat sapphire crystal with five layers of AR coating applied to the inside of the crystal as well as a 120 click unidirectional bezel with sapphire insert. The loom used on this watch is X1 Super Luminova, which has been applied to the dial, hands, and bezel at a thickness of 0.3 millimeters, which is the equivalent of about 20 layers. Now, for some of those surprises I had promised, this watch features a rhodium polished handset, which takes the finishing of these hands to a higher level that I personally have not seen in watches under $1,000. If there's others out there you know under a grand, please drop me a comment because I would love to check them out. And the case and bracelet are made of 316L stainless steel, but that steel has been DLC coated to 800 Vickers, nicknamed D-Protect, giving a higher scratch and scuff resistance. The bracelet is a three-link oyster style that does taper to 18 millimeters and has solid end links, vented slots, and the links are secured with the use of screw pins. Two other major surprises for me were the integrated quick release pins on the end links and the quick adjust clasp design. The spring bar release system nicknamed D-Change allows for toolless removal and installation of the bracelet. The only other watch I have with this feature is my Maurice Lacroix Icon Automatic, which costs three times more, so I love that we're getting a really nice luxury watch feature at this price point. Now I can see the future of bracelet design moving towards integrated systems like this. And when paired up with straps that have quick release spring bars, the lack of tools required makes me want this on all of my watch bracelets. The last surprise I just have to point out is the clasp design on this bracelet, nicknamed, you got it, D-Adjust, where you have on the fly tool less micro adjustments in five increments. Super simple, just gently push the bracelet inward up to those five clicks to get that perfect fit. And if you miscalculate the tightness or if your wrist expands throughout the day, simply press the button on the back with your thumbnail and it will disengage one micro adjustment slot with each push. It's important I note when first trying to figure this system out, at least for me, I had assumed that you could push and hold the button for multiple adjustments, 
but from what I can tell, it does have to be pressed each time to extend it multiple notches. Now, I have to admit, at first, when I saw the claim that this D-Protect coating can offer five and a half times more scratch resistance, I was pretty skeptical. But when using the D-Adjustment system over and over, I noticed one very important thing. The bracelet never got the all too familiar scuff marks that I have on many of my other bracelets made of 316L stainless steel. And even my Tudor Black Bay 41 could not escape the permanent scarring of metal on metal contact. But this Travis Diver looks brand new. I'm sold. I know Zen Watches offers their tegumented steel at 1200 Vickers, but again, Zen Watches also start at three times the cost. So I have to say, I'm really impressed with all of these unexpected features and elements that were put into this watch build. Next, we'll take a look at the design elements of the Travis Diver. Since we were just discussing the bracelet, we can start there. I'm a huge fan of the vented three link oyster design. I like that it feels rock solid with the fully milled clasp locking into place with the double security pushers. I like the etched branding in the clasp, all done in satin finish with beveled edges and high polish. This ties in with the satin finish links that have high polish on the sides. The nice part about the end links are that they are an almost hybrid between male and female end link designs. The initial end link is a female link, but there is a small mid link connector that functions essentially like a male end link would, giving a bit of flared out distance, but with flexibility to move and form better to various wrist shapes. The finishing is on par with many of the luxury watches that I've owned. All the surfaces are smooth to the touch, yet have enough edge to them where it doesn't feel sloppy like I've seen in many budget watches. If you've ever owned what we in the watch community call Chinese specials, then you know that the edges on the clasp or the case can be downright dangerously sharp, but that's not the case here. The steel is thick, the tolerances are tight, and fitment is done impeccably well. Moving to the case shape, I may be a bit biased as immediately upon looking at this watch, I caught some resemblance to the Tudor case design with the flatter side profile that slightly curves down at the lugs. Now, I love the horizontal brushing of the satin finish separated with a thin beveled edge of high polish running from lug tip to lug tip. Sitting atop of the case is a sapphire covered bezel. It's clear, reflective, highly scratch resistant with a tight coin edge done in high polish that gives a flash of light at the right angle. The bezel has zero back play, and while the coin edge is thin, the tightness of the bezel is just right, which allows me to turn it without any slipping. I did, however, have a bit of trouble when both my hands and the watch were wet. While minimalist and simplistic in design, the bezel insert features a bullseye shape at 12 o'clock with simple stick markers at three, six, and nine, and a thin orange curve line marking 15 minutes from the bullseye. I think this will be one of those design elements that may be subjective. While some will see it as bold and different, leaning towards a cleaner overall aesthetic by avoiding redundancy of the lines of the chapter ring, Others may see it as less traditional from what we typically are used to on modern divers. I think since there are no other Arabic numerals on this watch, it's fitting for the design and stands out apart from anything else in my collection. Another thing that sets it apart is this color. The Travis actually comes in three colors. This beautiful turquoise blue dial example, which has a brilliant sunburst texture to it. There is a vibrant light green dial, which has a linen texture and a black dial version with a matte finish dial texture. These colors tie in with the inspiration of the Travis name, which is the name of the popular Lake Travis located in Austin, Texas. Dusk, Juniper, and Sky. These three watch colors and dial textures tie into the local scenery of Lake Travis from the dark night skies to the trees surrounding the lake and the water in the blue sky itself. All three versions utilize orange contrast in the bezel and the second hand. And I like that it gives it this nice pop of color and complements the dials well. The chapter ring is brushed stainless steel, giving a muted reflection of the light. And we see a combination of rectangle and circular hour markers in black, bordered with loom for quick legibility in light or dark. The Ray Hot is also brushed steel, and we see Dufresne branding printed at 12 o'clock with an applied logo and high polish. And then we see the model name, automatic indication, and water resistance rating printed at six o'clock. The handset is finished nicely with an arrow shaped hour hand, a baton shaped minute hand, and needle shaped second hand with lollipop counterbalance, both which extend all the way out to the chapter ring. 
The rhodium plating on the hands gives nice reflections and direct lighting and pop out in front of this sunburst blue dial. The screw down crown has a very nicely finished coin edge that is easy to grip and winding the Salita movement feels really good. And since there's no date window on this watch, there is a ghost position on the crown. So position one won't be used. In position two, we see that the movement does hack and adjusting the time is nice and smooth. Screwing in the crown is effortless and there's no gritty feeling with the threads. There is a Texas star design etched into the screw down case back and we see all the details and specs also etched along the edge. Now, I think when looking at all the specs and features offered, the Travis Punch is way higher than its retail price of $699, but these watches are currently available for pre-order at a discounted price of $599. Steven is expecting to have orders built and ready to ship sometime in September or October. And once he starts to ship them out, the price will go back to the full $699. So if this watch speaks to you, don't miss out on that $100 savings. I will include links to the Dufresne website in the description down below for you. I don't get any kickbacks or payment for your orders, but definitely check them out. They have other models, which I have reviewed on this channel. So before you go, be sure to go give those a watch if you're interested. Now, I promised you some of my favorite strap combos with this watch. So while I roll that footage, I really want to hear your opinions on the Travis dive watch. So please leave me a comment. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also hit share for the YouTube algo that really helps out my channel with growing. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I did want to take a quick second and say, I really appreciate the support for all of you guys and gals that have stuck with me from the beginning and those of you joining today and in the future. So I just want to say thank you so much. And as always, may the Schwartz be with you and I will see y'all at the next one. Take care.